Good evening. Our June 27, 2019 City Council meeting is now called to order. Tonight, our invocation and pledge will be led by C.J. Porter and Dallas Martindale. They're both fourth graders of Sabine Elementary and members of Weeblow's Pack 259. Please rise. Dear Lord, we give thanks to you for our strength, for our courage, for our love, and for our city's leaders. We ask you to bless their actions, bless their thoughts, and bless their decisions to lead the citizens of Longview, Texas in a positive and compassionate way. In your name we ask, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You two young men, I want to thank you all very much for coming and doing this for us tonight. And I'd love for you to move to Longview, okay? Come on over. Those are the kind of guys I want living in our city. Tonight in employee recognition, we're going to recognize the city secretary's office. The city secretary maintains Longview's records. This department is responsible for housing the historical archives of city council minutes, ordinances, and resolutions, and maintaining a record of contracts and agreements. The city secretary's office also oversees city elections each year. The city secretary is responsible for creating documents to order an election, preparing information for prospective city council candidates, according to canvas of election results, and much more. The city secretary also verifies compliance with the city ordinances regarding Texas alcoholic beverage permits, ensuring distance and zoning regulations are met, as well as reviewing applications and signing all permits and yearly renewals within the city limits. Today we recognize Angie Shepard, city secretary, and Lily Duanis, assistant city secretary. Okay, this, this is an honor tonight to be here with these two ladies because let me just explain to you, what I read is a smidgen of what these ladies do. They answer every phone call that any one of us has up here. They give us information we need. They provide us with the information that we have to give to you all. When someone asks me a question, I go to them. I didn't go to Keith because they know more than Keith knows. They know more than we do. They, 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 these ladies know everything. <laughs> They're amazing. Sorry, Keith. It is what it is. Um, and most importantly, they let us know when our campaign finance things are due so we don't get in trouble with the state ethics commission. So they do so much in our, in, our, in our city that there's no way to sit up here and tell you all that they do, but just know how much we appreciate these ladies and everyone that's involved with what y'all do. Y'all are the best. You do it with such smiles on their faces, such happiness, such joy. No matter what we ask of them, it's always yes, sir, in a positive, smiling manner. And it's just so nice to work with you all. You make my job and our council's job so wonderful. Thank you both so much. You are the greatest. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm taller than both of them. <laughs> I do not have community recognition tonight, and I'll just take blame for that. Okay, it just slipped my mind. That's just all there is to it. I just didn't get around to it. It's summer, it's busy, and I didn't do it. So we'll make it up another, another night, okay? Because there's lots of people in our community that I could recognize. I just didn't have time to do it this week. So my, my apologies to you all. For the citizen comment, I have one speaker card. Mr. Chad Peterson, welcome to our chambers. Thank you. So I'm Chad Patterson, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, city leaders, community. Uh, I am two months old as the new CEO for Boys and Girls Clubs of the Big Pines. The best part of me is my wife Liz, who also serves now with Habitat for Humanity here. And just to get to the point, we've been called here to lead and serve and hopefully make a difference. And I just wanted to publicly thank the city for your support of our, our mission and want to make a public pledge to do my part, our part, to help life get better for kids and families. So I really just wanted to come and say thank you and I look forward to serving with you. Thanks. Thank you, Chad. Welcome. And we're actually, Mr. Mayor, moving. We'll be official residents tomorrow, so if it's okay, we're going to leave and go pack. Please, <laughs> and register to vote. We will. Thank, Thank you. you. We have a presentation item. Uh, 
present the Arts Longview Culture District application video. Ms. Nancy Murray, the Arts Longview Chairperson. Thank you, Mayor Mack and City Council people. Um, just to take a couple minutes of your time, it has been my immense pleasure to serve as chairman of the Cultural Arts District Task Force this past 18 months. Um, and it is my pleasure to tell you that we have submitted our application to the Texas Commission on the Arts in Austin. It looked like this, and uh, the city has received four copies of this. So um, if you would like to see a copy, Mayor Mack has one, Laura Hill has one, the Public Library has one, and, and Dietrich Johnson has one. Um, we are saying that we are comfortably confident in our application. Um, this is a competitive process. Last year, the Texas Commission on the Arts received eight applications this year, and, and they approved four. Um, this year, they have received six, so we're, we're hopeful. I'd like to thank the city for your support. I'd like to thank you for the three people that you gave us for the last 18 months. Dietrich Johnson was our art liaison, um, and he chaired our letters of support committee. Sean Hara did all things IT, uh, the multiple iterations of our map, the town hall, the presentations that we've given, uh, he did a, a fantastic job. And, and Laura Hill was our grant writer, and she gave hundreds of hours of her volunteer time to this. She is the most efficient, uh, dedicated person that I have ever worked with. I, I gave her one thing to do. I thought she, it'll take her two days to get back to me. She got back to me in 20 minutes. <laughs> Laura Hill is amazing. So you are like Longview. The citizens of Longview are lucky to have Laura Hill. Um, thank you for sharing them with us. Our proposed district goes from downtown Longview, down Moberly, and includes Laterno. Our mission is to spark a love of the arts, history, and culture in order to celebrate and enhance our creative community. Um, cultural arts districts have been known for every dollar spent in the cultural arts district. The multiplier effect is that it's respent three times in our local community. What we're trying to do is bring more dollars here and this is hopefully going to open up some funding at the state level for the arts groups in Longview. Just some statistics, 800,000 people uh, in Texas work in the creative sector. One in 15 Texans work in the creative sector. The arts industry, the arts industry grew at 15% last year. So if your businesses aren't growing at 15%, you need the creative sector to help you. Um, that brought in statewide 350 million in sales tax. Okay, so hopefully we can bring in some more sales tax for you. And last year, just so you'll know, the out-of-state visitors that came to Texas, 25% of them went to a cultural event. So. My husband thinks we should travel for sporting and for hunting and fishing events. I'm telling you, 25% of us want to go to a culture, and we'll drag you to a museum or to a cultural event <coughs> of some kind. So 50% uh, of our points come from the video. We're here to show it to you. It is five minutes long. It could not be one second longer. Mayor Mack is in it. He did a fabulous job uh, representing the city of Longview. I narrate the thing. I will never do that again. It was freezing cold that day, and I was having to do 10 takes. Mayor Mack did his real quick. So um, with that, we'll show you the video. I just want to thank you all very much for your support. Arts Longview. Join us on a journey through the Pine Curtain to Longview, where we have our own East Texas flavor and very unique culture. And mix a little bit of Louisiana with a whole lot of Texas. This presentation will be a journey of discovery where you will see the sights, events, and creative energy of our community. We will show you the behind the scenes footage of the people that make this happen and why it is so important to them. 
we all know strong art communities build strong cities, and Longview is ready for this. We as a city, we spent a lot of money building these areas of town up to make them better places, better for our citizens, better for people to come in to see us. So it's important that we have this designation to help grow what we're already doing in the city of Longview to make it just a, a fantastic place to come and visit. We have a thriving visual, performing, and culinary arts community. This cultural hub starts with our artists. I am so honored to be back here with Longview Valley Theater performing, and I've learned so much, and it's opened so many opportunities for me. Howdy, y'all. I'm Neil McCoy from Longview, located in the old East Texas Piney Woods of beautiful <laughs> Northeast Texas. On behalf of all the folks from Longview and me, we feel we're, we're very rich in diversity when it comes to cultural art. We love it here. We love being in Texas. And I won't even begin to talk about all the great music. Well, maybe I will. The great music comes out of here. Come taste the flavor of Longview, where we have little Cajun kitchens and top 10 Texas barbecue all within our district. So we're here in Longview, Texas at the original Bodacious. We like to think it's like the flavor of East Texas right now. We help put East Texas on the barbecue map. Fine food and fine arts are a great marriage together. You've got Van Gogh, you've got Picasso, and then you've got Carter's Barbecue and you've got me. So all that together, you've got fine food and fine art. That's all you need for Longview to make it happen. Becoming a cultural arts district has cemented our arts organizations with a unity of purpose. Arts Longview has become an arts family. Come join our family. As a business owner in the field of the arts, I've seen the commitment that the city has had towards the arts and I appreciate it because it draws creative people to our community. Businesses moving to Longview value creative people. And creative people want cultural districts. A thriving cultural arts community has been shown to help drive commerce in a community. When people come to visit one venue, they often go to a second or a third, not to mention the restaurants and hotels and other businesses they might visit. One of the benefits of a thriving cultural arts community is the attraction of new talent for businesses that are here in the community. Longview has a rich history of providing cultural opportunities for East Texas. To be considered for this designation makes our community very excited about what's to come. Longview has an intrinsic, creative energy. It's a place where freedom of expression in all art forms is encouraged. At R2, I've met many new friends, and I hope to encourage more people to come and join in on the fun. I love to be a part of an environment where I can be creative and show off my natural self. Longview's a special place. We think about creativity, about the arts. Look at the icons Longview has produced. A world famous country music superstar, renowned fashion designer. For so many reasons, Longview deserves this designation, and I'm excited about seeing it happen. The idea of the Cultural Arts District recognizes the importance of art to the community's well-being. This will weave art into the fabric of the community instead of having it over in a gallery or over in a museum. I think that if the artists will unite, it will be for the benefit of the community as well as the artist. It's a quality of life issue. At Arts Longview, we're about art, history, and culture. We are the art and soul of Longview. I travel the nation and I do house concerts, performances, and shows all over the place where I combine music and poetry and put them together. I felt an immediate energy. I felt an immediate sense of welcoming. I, I've got to figure out a way to spend some more time with Longview. There's never been a better time. Now's the time for Longview. The time for Longview is now. The time for Longview is now. The time for Longview is now. 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 Nancy, what a fantastic video. Thank you for all that you all have done. And I know some of your board members and task members are here. Please, please have everyone stand up. Thank you. The time for Long Views Now. Absolutely. We, we wish you all the best. We know that this is going to turn out well because I think you all put together a, a phenomenal presentation that, that shows a cross-section of our community, which is what they look for. And they want to see 
all, all that there is, and I think we have so much to offer, and I think we're on the way up, and that's important, and I thank you for the dedication you all have put into it. The time, this is a, this has to be a work of love, because as you said, it takes hundreds and hundreds of hours to get to where we are. So uh, congratulations, we look forward to celebrating the, the, the announcement when we are designated, and we'll go from there, okay? Thank you all so much. Mr. Mayor, can we yes, get sir. copies of that? You can't, David. Well. <laughs> yes, we can get you all copies of that. Okay. Very much so, thank you. We're not a public safety update. Chief Bishop. Mayor Mack, council members, Mr. Bonds, good evening. I'd like to start my update tonight by uh, thanking and congratulating two of our officers that have recently retired from the department. Uh, Lieutenant Shane McCarter uh, has retired after 23, 23 years of service in law enforcement. Uh, Lieutenant McCarter's first 15 years uh, began with the Arlington Police Department and he has served our police department for the last eight years. Um, Officer Ricky Mitchell is retiring after 27 years of service. Um, Officer Mitchell served his first eight years in law enforcement with the Marshall Police Department for eight years and then he has served our community for the last 19 years. So. I want to thank them for their service and congratulate them on their retirement and offer them best wishes and their future endeavors. Back in the, around the first week of June, um, I received a phone call from a board member from the Texas Citizens on Patrol Association. Uh, this is a statewide association that local citizen on patrol organizations can join. Uh, when I spoke to the representative, they were having their annual conference down in Round Rock and asked if there was a way that I could attend uh, their banquet that occurred on the last night of the conference. It's a, a, a banquet, an awards banquet, and could I be there? And then they told me why I needed to be there. So on June 15th, I secretly traveled to Round Rock, Texas without any of our participants down there knowing about it, where we were awarded two different awards from uh, the state association. Our uh, Citizens on Patrol group was recognized and awarded for being the Citizens on Patrol group that had the largest membership increase in the last year. So. Uh, they were recognized for that and then officer brandon thornton who is our liaison officer that works with the citizens on patrol group was awarded the officer of the year um, for longview so i was told when when i received the call that this is the first time that any city and we're talking cities from north south east and west texas big cities small cities that that no agency has ever won two awards uh, as a result of the same conference. So um, Mary Sanders, our president is here um, with the COP, and Officer Brandon Thornton and Chris Turney actually attended the conference. So I want to congratulate them on the fine work and job that they do and congratulate them on their awards that they received. <clears throat> So this week, Longview, um, the city of Longview was also host to the 2019 Texas Police Association Conference that was held uh, Monday through Wednesday at the Hilton Garden Inns up on Hawkins Parkway. <clears throat> this association has been in existence for 120 years and this was our 120th uh, conference that they, that they held here. We had law enforcement professionals again from all over the state that were here to receive training and, and attend the conference. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Paul Thompson, who is the president of, this, of the association this year. He is also the police chief for the West Rusk ISD. And uh, being the president, he was able to bring the, uh, the conference here and everybody had a good time and received some good training. And Mayor, I'd like to thank you for coming out and welcoming our law enforcement officers from across the state. It was a privilege, Chief. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. We'll be having a retirement reception for Miranda Davis. Miranda is a 20-year employee of our telecommunications operator and our 911 dispatch center. Uh, that'll be held Friday, June 28th at 2 p.m. 
in the Roy Stone Police Training Facility. So I'd like to invite anybody that would like to come uh, and uh, participate in her retirement reception. Also, this Saturday, June 29th, from 1 to 3, we'll be doing the child identification at Walmart on 4th Street and would encourage anybody that wants to get a child ID, get their pertinent information on a CD that they can take home with them uh, to come out and visit with our officers out there um, on Saturday from 1 to 3. We're also taking applications for our women's safety course that will be held July 22 through 26. And for more information, we'd ask that they go to longviewtexas.gov slash women's safety uh, for more information on that. We'd love to have uh, a full class for this course. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Chief Bishop? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is that you, Chief Stillman? Yes, sir. <laughs> Glad to be back. <laughs> Mayor Mack, members of council, Mr. Bonds, thank you for the opportunity to update you on a few things that have been happening in the fire department. So I'd be remiss if I didn't circle back because I missed the last meeting and talk about this whole donut day, uh, donut eating competition. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still struggling with how I should feel about this, but at the end of the day, I want to thank our team. I want to thank Julie Woods and Associates for hosting this and the PD team for coming out. I think everybody had a great time. We're proud to have the trophy, and at the end of the day, it's still a W, and we'll take it. <laughs> We're still licking our wounds from a couple of golf games and some softball, so we needed a, we needed a win, so we'll, we'll go on from there. Uh, we had a couple members of our department, Trey Thompson and Logan Leckins, that were uh, – admitted in to be members of Texas Task Force 2. This is a Dallas-based urban search and rescue team. Uh, they're one of the premier teams across the state of Texas. I just want to, uh, to recognize these guys and, and congratulate them on that accomplishment. It really speaks volumes of the well, highly trained and skilled people that we have here working for the city of Longview that the state also will call upon them to help out in a, desire, a desperate time of need. So uh, congratulations to those two guys. I know they will represent as well. So we actually, the fire department or the fire service had a, uh, the Texas Fire Service had one of their bigger conventions here. The State, Firemen's and Fi the State Firefighters and Fire Marshals Association of Texas, this is an organization that it is, is in its 143rd year, uh, brought their convention, their annual convention here to Longview. They were here with us from Friday until just yesterday. Uh, so this group represents about 20,000 firefighters from across the state and about 1,200 different fire departments. So this is a pretty big organization. They've actually been in Longview before. They were here in 1977 for this convention and in 1991. So we were certainly proud to have them back. They were in Arlington last year, so we were certainly proud to get them back in Northeast Texas. Uh, and, let, and I think they had a great convention and a lot of people pitched in. I certainly want to recognize our CVB staff and the mild cop staff that really catered to the needs of this group and really I had a lot of compliments from them at the different activities that I participated with, and uh, it, it was over the top. They, they felt really welcomed here in Longview, and that was great for us to hear. So we look forward to the next time they can come back and spend some time with us. We actually have worked over the course of the past couple of weeks to get back to a fully staffed status. All of our operational positions are now full with the addition of these last five apprentice firefighters. And welcome aboard to those guys, Firefighter Taylor Simmons, or Apprentice Taylor Simmons, Apprentice Colin Moore, Apprentice Preston Rice Singer, Apprentice Hunter King, and Apprentice Jesse Bingston. We look forward to these guys' future service for the city. They're going to spend the next several uh, weeks getting oriented, and then they'll spend about the first year and a half to two years of their career getting fully trained up so that they can be turned loose out there on the street to fully serve the citizens of Longview. So we look forward to a lot of, a lot of good things from these guys. They're certainly the future of the department. And last but certainly not least, Code Red, uh, we're right in the middle of storm season. We've seen some weather come through. We're expecting a little bit more to come through again this weekend. And uh, I highly encourage people to sign up and take advantage of this. There's a free app for your smartphone so that you're making sure that you get those notifications in the middle of the night when you're safe and sound and sleeping in your bed and you want to know what's going on or why the sirens are going off. This is the thing to tell you. So urge people to take advantage of that. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Chief Stillman? Chief, thank you, sir. Good Thanks, to have you back. We got a consent agenda. Any items council might pull off for separate discussion? Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Action item. Consider, consider resolution authorizing a tax abatement agreement with Indevco Plastics. Uh, Mr. Mansfield, welcome, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor, Council, Mr. Bonds. Uh, really honored to be before you all this evening to consider the application for tax abatement for Indevco's planned expansion. Um, 
they've been Indeco has been here since 2015, I believe they started operations, and they've continued to expand, add employees, and add investment here. Uh, they're a worldwide company. Um, really, really great story when you sit down and visit with them, and a great partner with us as well. What they intend to do is invest another nine nine and a half million dollars and add another 40 jobs. These jobs pay a little over $41,000, so they're very good salary jobs. With the abatement, the 100% abatement consideration, uh, that would be realizing a uh, $263,108 that would be abated over 10 years. But in return, through their other sales tax and utility payments, the city over that same 10-year period would recognize $6,938,000 in return. So this is a really, really good project for Longview. Uh, we've committed $400,000 to their investment. Uh, we hope to uh, see them continue to expand and, and add employees here. Wayne, I'm sorry, you, you said they added 40 jobs? They will add 40 jobs okay. over the course of the next four years. And, and, and what was the salary range? A little over 41000 That's what I thought. Thank you so much. I, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, that's fantastic news, Wayne. We, we really are excited about that. Uh, thanks for what is doing. Y'all are continuing to forge a path for us. It is the path we want to be on. So yes, keep up the good work. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Any questions, Mr. Mansfield? And we will have another announcement tomorrow, I believe. Yes, we will. So. Motion Great. approved. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh -huh. We consider a resolution awarding contracts to and authorizing and directing the city manager or city manager's days need to escape documents with Tyler Technologies and Enterprise Resources for the amount of $1.8 million. Uh, Justin Cure, please. Thank you, sir. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Bonds, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight about our enterprise resource planning project that the city staff has been working on for some time. Uh, if you recall, we talked about this during budget preparation last year, and the first year of this project is actually funded this fiscal year. So I'd like to introduce Ms. Tracy Rao with Plant Moran. She's going to tell you how we got to tonight, so thank you. Good evening. So I'm from Plant Moran, I'm a senior manager there, and uh, I was a technical advisor on the um, selection portion of this. So a little bit about Plant Moran. We have been around since uh, 1924, not me specifically, but <laughs> Plant Moran has. Um, we have been serving the public sector for over 50 years, and we have offices worldwide. Um, we are the 11th largest consulting and, uh, consulting and accounting firm in the country. And Plant Moran is an independent consulting firm, meaning we don't represent any specific software. We have a team of about 35 of us that just work with municipalities across the country. Um, these are a few of our um, municipalities around the country that we've worked with. Three, um, besides Longview, have been in Texas, and we go anywhere from uh, Florida to California. So we are flying a lot around the country and helping municipalities choose software, any technology needs that they have. So with the um, enterprise resource planning, the ERP, um, what we, the benefits that you're going to see in a new ERP system are it's going to create a lot more efficiencies. You're going to have better tools to use. Um, there's going to, it's going to be easier. Hopefully, you'll be able to do better searches on the computer. You won't be going to file cabinets anymore. It, you'll reduce paper. Um, it'll be better decision making because the, you'll have real time information at your fingertips. Um, there'll be dashboards created for the staff so that they can set up their favorites and link right to it. They can um, see all of uh, the purchase orders that they have to approve. Um, they'll be able to use their mobile phones for many things. All of this will create also um, better citizen serving, um, better services for the citizens. There'll be some portals um, that they can use as well. And mainly it's going to create like a, a one database for the majority of all the software. So they'll all be integrated. So what I mean by that is 
The utility billing will be in the same system as the financials, and everything will be updated in real time. So you should be able to see reports in real time. You don't have to wait till month end or anything. Um, the other thing is it, it really, um, it reduces the risks of um, the city falling behind technologically. So um, many costs can be avoided by being more efficient. So there won't be duplicate entries. You won't have to have separate spreadsheets to keep data on. Um, the system should handle most of that. So a little bit about the project overview of three projects that we've worked on in the past. We started with an IT and GIS strategic plan, and we completed that in June of 2015, and that's when we recommended that the city look at replacing or modernizing um, all of their core enterprise systems, such as their financials, HR payroll, their timekeeping system, as well as their um, <coughs> utility billing. And then in, we started in 2017 with the needs assessment. So what that was is we uh, met with many departments and gathered their needs, what they wanted in a new system, what they didn't like in their current system, um, and then in August of 2018, we kicked off the selection. And I'm going to turn it over now to Brian Passas because he was the project manager on the selection project. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, everyone, for having us today. So when we started the project, uh, we started off by getting together a uh, steering committee um, of the different stakeholders at the city. That included Justin Cure um, as the executive sponsor and Blake Gore as the project manager, as well as representation from stakeholders across the city um, to provide input as we went throughout the project. So the project started in um, September 2018 is when we kicked off the project, um, developed a charter talking about what we wanted to gain um, by completing the project um, and the reasons that we were doing the project. We also developed evaluation criteria which determined how we would select the ultimate system. Over the next month, we worked to develop requirements or specifications for the software based on what we learned in our needs assessment and we finalized those working with different city staff. After that, we released the RFP um, towards the end of last year, um, and at the beginning of this year, uh, in January, we shortlisted some vendors uh, to come in for software demonstrations and to complete additional due diligence. Once those demonstrations were completed in January and February, we spent a significant amount of time with, uh, working with the city um, on uh, quite a few questions and answers back and forth with the vendors as well as reference checks and site visits um, during the months of February and March. Following that, um, our, the steering committee selected the preferred finalist vendor and we began contract and statement of work negotiations uh, which just wrapped up this month. I wanted to share a few key facts about the project just so that everyone can understand the amount of time that the staff here at the city has dedicated to this project. Um, in the previous project, the needs assessment, uh, over 26 different groups of city staff and stakeholders in that end result came to meetings to talk with us about what they'd like to get out of a new system, what their requirements would be, and, and issues that they were having with the current software. <laughs> Then as we developed the requirements, we met with another 18 different groups of city staff uh, to hear about what they wanted in the software and prioritize those needs. All in, we had over 3,000 different requirements for the software that vendors responded to, and we had five different vendors submit proposals. Of those five vendors, um, the steering committee shortlisted two vendors, um, Superion, which has changed its name to Central Square, and Tyler Technologies, and Tyler Technologies was the ultimate finalist preferred vendor. Um, and as part of the due diligence, in addition to the significant number of questions and answers, uh, city staff also reached out to Mesquite and Colleyville um, to hear about their experience with these software providers. So the cost um, for this project is split among three different vendors. So it's Tyler Technologies, which is the main um, ERP solution provider, Time Clock Plus, which is providing the timekeeping solution, and then for city hardware like servers and such. And each of those come with you know, a one-time cost as well as ongoing maintenance um, and annual costs. 
I wanted to share the timeline of what we can expect as we st um, the city embarks on this project. We'll start by coming up with a chart of accounts um, starting in July, which should run through September. Following that, the city will begin the HR payroll and timekeeping implementation, which will run from October 2019 to July 2020. Following that, the financials phase will begin um, in July 2020 and run until April 2021. And then utility billing will kick off in April and run until April of the following year, 2022. With that, I will um, open it up in case you have any questions that we could answer about the project. It's three different years. Are there any questions? Yeah. Mr. Bertle. What was the, what was the total amount about three slides back that you, that you showed on the screen real quick? So we're going to be paying $2.3 million for this, this project. <clears throat> what is the lifetime expectancy of this project, of, these, of this software? Um, so uh, it, it would vary with each one, but most of these software companies, and, and these two specifically, do have, um, Tyler calls it an evergreen methodology, where they continuously update the software. So the goal would be that this software would continue to serve the city um, so that's for the foreseeable cost future. Us Two hundred sixteen, two hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to keep this up, uh, this software updated. Yeah, and that will include maintenance and support from the software vendors. And we find this to be in line. And, and with. you don't foresee this going out of date. No. There's a method to my questions because I know some of the schools around here have constantly have to change software because the uh, it, it's just not staying ongoing with them. Yep. And you know, we're spending a lot of money, and I don't, I want to make sure that it's going to last. 20 years at least for the citizens around here. Do you know, uh, doesn't Gray <coughs> County use Tyler Technologies? Does anybody know? <coughs> it is if you do a public search, so they do something for them. Yeah, so Tyler Technologies works with a, a very large number of uh, municipalities across the country, so there's quite a few near here that are working with them. Where are they headquartered on Their headquarters in Yarmouth, Maine, if I'm correct? Yeah. But they have offices across the country. How old is our current software packages that we're using? I will pass that question to Justin. <laughs> We've been using our, our current financial uh, at least 15 years. I want to say 20 plus, and it is actually at end of life. We actually use a a Tyler product for the financials today uh, that they are going to quit supporting. They've actually told us they're going to quit putting R and D in it. So we're kind of at an end of life. Uh, we also have the payroll side, which we've had a lot of trouble with, uh, and we really need a new system there. There's uh, things in uh, HR that they do not even have a software system for, so they're keeping up with these things in spreadsheets and things like that. So. Will there also be a reduction in staff with the new technology? Not that we've identified, no. We, we haven't identified it. No, we have not identified an increase okay. either. Justin, question. I know that we we are we have the software that we use currently, and I know it's not free. We have to pay something every year for that. Yes. So we're looking at two hundred twenty thousand dollars, but not from zero. It's two hundred twenty thousand dollars from what? Uh, I want to say about one hundred and fifty currently. Very good. That, that's just what I needed to know. Thank you so much. Um, and and if if IT is more efficient, then we obviously save money, correct? Absolutely. I'm, there, not, a, I'm not a big quite, IT guy, but I, I kind of know a few things about that. I know that you know, efficiency equals money when you're talking about IT. So, um, And so we feel like we, we don't, I mean, our software is not going to continue to be updated that we currently use. So we can either stay with antiquated software or we move up to a different software. And, and I think that goes around with what Mr. Pirtle was saying. The one we use now is out of, it's, it's not going to be updated after 15 years. And I think his point was very pertinent in that make sure this one isn't going to be in 15 years, whoever's going to sit at this table, which won't be any of us, they're saying, okay, we've got to do this all over again. So we, we've kind of looked ahead of that, correct? And, and I knew that y'all would, and I appreciate it. It's, it's nice to be able to say it publicly because that way the citizens understand what we're looking at. Thank you very much. Um, one other question. Okay, we're using Tyler Technologies, and that's what we're currently using for accounting and all. So they did not have an evergreen uh, part of the current the software that we're using, but the next one we can use 
for infinity pretty much. Yes, sir. The, the current system we use, it's called Tyler Eden, and it's an older product. Tyler, Tyler has a history. They'll buy up other software companies, and I believe this is one that they purchased and eventually got to a point where the technology was so old that, you know, they do some updates, but they're not putting research into it and actually making it a better product. I don't expect this will last forever, but it, it should last for a long time. Yes, okay. yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing is, and, and good point, Mr. Wright, but nothing, nothing is infinity, and, you know, who knows where the next breakthrough in technology will come and then everything that we've ever known will be out of date and it's just that's just progress and we can't look in the future and not progress we have to go with what we have so i think what we're doing is doing the best we can with what we are presented with right now thank you very much any other questions uh, did like miss cohen and HR and all them today, are they the ones that kind of selected how we would go on this route? Are they comfortable with this? Sure, they were part yeah. of the teams that, that participated in the extensive studying and interviewing, yes. Okay. Yeah, the good thing about this is it's going to be the integration between HR and timekeeping and finance. Now they're two, they're all separate programs and you have to try to mesh them together. Yeah. It's, it's real trouble. And we'll have automatic updates now, which are also very beneficial to what we do as business in the city, correct? Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you all for the presentation. Any other questions, Council? Good, good discussion, good questions. One thing, and, yes. and so we're not adding <laughs> $1.8 million or $2 million or whatever it is to the budget. It's already in there for this year. The first year is, yes, this is actually going to take four years to implement this software. So it is going to be a, a, a portion every year until we get it complete. Okay. But it comes out of both utility fund and the general fund, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Split. Very good. Moved to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We now consider a resolution awarding contract to Enterprise Resource Planning for three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Justin. Yes, sir. Thank this you, sir. is the second part of yes. that. This is the timekeeping and the hardware side. Excellent. Moved to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen, for the presentation. We're now out of the community interest. Uh, we'll start with you. Uh, first of all, can we excuse Mr. Moore from absence today? So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Ms. Snotty. Good evening, everyone. Um, wanted to just share with you guys. This was a picture from um, one of the uh, activities during Juneteenth. These guys were very competitive. It started out as a softball game that got very heated very quick, but all's well that ends well because they ended in prayer in the middle of the field. So I thought that was pretty, pretty exciting. Um, okay. I don't know if you guys were, well, maybe all of us are old enough to recognize Gail Devers, uh, Olympic gold medalist. She was here uh, this past week. Uh, exciting story, exciting testimony. So uh, was honored just to, to have her here. She was a keynote speaker at the Journey of a Young Ladies uh, Convention this weekend. So that was exciting. Last but not least, uh, yeah. <laughs> Had a blast. Just wanted to give a shout out to one of our jewels in the community, uh, Komatsu. Had a great time going there and uh, had a tour. Got the opportunity. Go ahead to the next one. I drove that in today. That's parked outside. So had a great time. Just wanted to say a big thank you to Komatsu for their ongoing and continuing investment in our city as well as in our community. And happy belated birthday, Mayor. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mr. Wade. Uh, nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. Mrs. Shahara. I do have one with a slide. I uh, just wanted to make sure that it is on your calendar for the sesquicentennial ball that is coming up February 22nd, 2020. That'll be 6.30 at Mod Cobb and tickets are going in fast. Uh, the ball is actually put on by the Junior League uh, in partnership with the City of Longview. I believe some of the lower level tables have been totally sold out. So if you would like to attend, it'll obviously be the party of a century or a century and a half, whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, and so it'll be a great time. Uh, food will be Bear Creek Smokehouse. There will be two live bands. Uh, so it'll definitely be worth attending. If you would like to get tickets, you can go to Longview 150, the numbers, ball.com and check that out. There's also a Facebook page, but please go look into that now. I know it seems really far off, but tickets are going fast. So go, go do it now. Exciting times. Thank you, Mr. Shahara. Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, I'm going to step on Mr. Pirtle's toes a little bit, but we have a lady in, uh, in District 6, but she is a lady of Spring Hill. 
Uh, Kay Gregors has been doing stuff for Spring Hill for a long time, and t today is her birthday. She's turning 39, <laughs> and uh, we just want to wish her a happy birthday. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Mr. Pirtle. Along with Mrs. Shahar's uh, announcement, I was in the ninth grade at the 100th one, so <laughs> <clears throat> I remember that one. <laughs> hey, you went that far behind. I, there, I remember it, too. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what you didn't know that, that, that far behind. <laughs> I remember it very clearly. Mr. Bonds. I've got an announcement on behalf of Mr. Moore. The, he has an upcoming meeting 7 p.m. Tuesday, July 9 at the Pine Tree ISD Community Center where he'll be discussing the soon coming improvements to McWhorter Park. Also, he would like to invite those that are interested into a historical marker workshop Saturday, July 13, 10 a.m. at Development Services. And for more information, 237-1072. Mr. Bonds, why did you get through that so much quicker than Mr. Moore gets through those? Uh, he, he enjoys speaking <laughs> in public more than I do. Thank you for bringing mm -hmm. us up to date. I do have a few items of committee interest. As you'll see up on the screen, the city also will be closed on July 4th for Independence Day. Garbage and recycling collection will remain on its regular schedule because those guys never rest. Uh, patriotic Pup Fashion Show and Weenie Dog Races on July the 4th. Uncle Cracker and Opening Act, Dagnabbit on July the 4th. You know, this, I, I'm going to stop a second. J our July 4th celebration is going to be phenomenal this year. Uh, Dagnabbit, of course, is always a crowd favorite because they're a local band that does so much for the community. Everybody loves their music. But goodness, Uncle Cracker, I hope you all know who that is because that is, that is a fantastic band. I'm so excited we were able to get someone like that. It's going to be a great time. Make plans to come out and visit us at, uh, at the fairgrounds in Mont Cobb, and it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of activities going on. So um, make plans to be out there. It's, gonna be, it's a free concert and free fireworks, and it's the best fireworks show ever, anywhere. So come on out, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, for more information, go to longviewtexas.gov slash calendars. Upcoming events, Alley Cat 2019, June 29th. The Herps Exotic Reptile and Pet Show, June 29th and 30th. Art Walk Downtown, July the 11th. Go to visit longviewtexas.gov dot com slash events for more information on that. And one, one other quick note, I want to just recognize today um, that the Everest uh, Rehab Facility had their grand opening this afternoon. I was supposed to be there to speak and I did not make it because this has not this has been a crazy day. But I, I just want to say I had dinner with Mark Sparks this week. He's the the, the brains behind this, the, the, the guy who did the investment in this whole rehab facility, and it's going to be an amazing facility for Longview, and it's going to, it's going to bring money to Longview, but it's going to keep money in Longview because a, a huge portion of our rehab goes out of Longview to a sister city. And so this rehab facility will serve a huge um, market in our community, and I'm excited that he elected to spend his money here and choose us because he has five of these going on right now across the United States, and Longview is one of those. And so I feel like, and I asked him at our dinner meeting the other night, I asked him, I said, how did you choose Longview? He said, Longview chose us because he went through how they chose, and, and we fit what they're looking for. And, and I, I love hearing someone like that who, who, ha who can go anywhere say, you know, you have what we're looking for because I want more companies to say you have what we're looking for. That's our goal and that's what I think this council is striving for and I commend all of you all and I commend city staff and LEADCO and all those out there that are making a difference. You know, the art people, everybody is making a difference and that's what's making Longview attractive to other people. So I thank you to Mark Sparks. Thank you for um, your investment and your trust in us and your faith that we're going to make this thing work. So uh, I just wanted to bring that up. Survey time. What would you estimate our current unemployment rate to be in Longview? Well, those are your choices, and I don't know how many of you all follow unemployment rates because it's not something that's on most people's radar, but if you don't have a job, it's on your radar. And so this is something that I'm really, really, really proud of. Our, our statistics go from 17 to 35%, 37%, and 11%. And, and it's, you know, we kind of fudge, it's, it's kind of a hard one to determine, but if you said between one and three and three and five, you're really close because the answer is 3.1%. Um, I know this because Ken Hedler interviews me every Friday on the, uh, the unemployment rate. And, and, and it's great to see us at this level. And I don't know if you know what that means, but here's what it means. As he told me, this is the lowest it has ever been since they started recording unemployment rates. So we're doing really, really good here in Longview, putting people to work, 
people who want a job, we're finding jobs for them. And just like Mr. Mansfield just presented, in DEFCO's, uh, you know, giving us 40 more jobs, you know, every 40 helps. Every one helps for that person that needs a job. So I, I like what I see. This rehab hospital is going to employ 80 to 100 people, I think. It, it's, it's, it's a little things like that continue to add up every time someone spends their money in Longview. So I'm excited. I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad our, our unemployment is where it is because that means we're putting people to work and that means we're doing a good job. So thank you to the citizens and the companies and the industry that are out there that are putting our citizens to work because it makes a difference. So do you think our unemployment rate is higher or lower than state level? Well, I kind of gave it away saying that this is the all time low because the state level is at 3.5. So we're below the state level, which is also a good economic indicator for our East Texas economy. We're doing good. So let's keep that up. I'm excited about it, and I, I like seeing that uh, happen in our community. So good job to all those involved. So with that, we will have to we're going to retire to executive session to deliberate uh, regarding real property under Texas government code section 551.072 and consult with the city attorney under state government code section 551.071. Deliberate the purchase and value of real property interest for the traffic safety in the Greenbrier subdivision located in the city of Longview, Texas, Gregg County, Texas, with the acquisition is for a public purpose. And we will not reconvene when the executive session is over. So this meeting is adjourned.